Oh, now, with the young kids these days, I, I want to know why they're um, so obsessed uh, with, with the sex. Uh, uh, they say that I, that I rape the girls, and uh, I just say I eat the pudding pops and wear the sweater vests. You. <laughs> you know what I mean, Dolly. Bill Cosby. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. I had a dream, I had a dream that one day the little black boys and little white boys and little white girls and little black girls would roll up the swish of floods together and smoke that sweet hash and please and harmony. And that is my dream. My, my movie king. Um, and then Cartman from South Park. Hey guys, what, what are we doing today? All right. Is that stupid Jim Kyle? Is stupid Jim Kyle gonna ruin it again? God damn it, guys! I told you not to bring stupid Jim Kyle. I, I'm tired of stupid Jim Kyle coming down here. South Park, uh, Carmen. Uh, and then last one, I'm just gonna leave you guys with uh, Obama. Uh, good evening, America. Uh, <laughs> in the state of our national economy, uh, it's absolutely imperative uh, that the people of the United States of America uh, band together uh, for peace, uh, hope. Uh, and the betterment of our fellow man. Uh, now, in addition, uh, Michelle, she makes the best waffles uh, that you'll ever eat. Thank you. Um, Jason Sanchez. What's up, guys? Doing all right? Hello? All right, cool. Doing all right? Doing all right? We're gonna wake up a bit. We're gonna wake up a bit. All right. Um, so first off, um, let's talk financial times. Um, so Domino's Pizza um, <laughs> changed their company name to uh, Domino's. <laughs> Domino's Pizza changed their name to Domino's because you know apparently they have other stuff like salads and calzones. Pastas. Who the fuck calls Domino's thinking, hey, uh, should I get uh, extra cheese on that little pasta salad? No, like, unless you're communist or liberal, like, no one's gonna call for, like, sorry, all right, I snuck that little joke in there, but, <laughs> uh, like, no one's gonna call Domino's thinking of anything besides pizza. I, stupid. Another stupid thing, Little League Baseball. Obviously, we know the joke, right? They fill your hopes and dreams. Everyone's a winner. You know, get a participation trophy. Uh, and you see it years later in the like sales section at Walmart for like twelve dollars, you know, twelve trophies for three bucks a pop, uh, and that's how much like a chocolate was worth. And it sucks. <laughs> and uh, I always made fun of the girls across the park, you know, I'd, like you know, like uh, softball girls, baseballs for men, because I had no idea at that age that they would all grow up to be like bombshell college athletes. I had no idea. Uh, so it backfired, and you know, I like pulled statistics out of my ass, like, hey, you know. Um, actually like 20% harder to hit a softball than it is to base. Like I, I don't know, I just made up stuff to make it seem like, you know, they were empowered or something. And I, uh, I you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really, I couldn't really talk to them. So I, I started playing basketball. I make, uh, I make varsity team uh, my freshman year. So I was like, I was like, man, basketball was a sport back in high school, right? And uh, we were playing a rival school and I invite this girl to the game. It's, it, you know, it's at her school, her turf. And, I get the chance to make the game-winning shot. Now, keep in mind, it's a corner shot, so I have a perfect view of the of the audience. And she is in the stands directly across from me. I'm in the corner. I'm lining up the shot, and she, everyone, you know, holds their breath in suspense. And she bites her finger, like you know, like, like she's like shocked. But I had just like watched a few pornos before, so it was that kind of thing that kicks it off, you know. That's like. Uh, you know, hey, I, uh, I finished fixing your pipes, uh, you know, you gotta get a pay. She's like, oh, I, I forgot my wallet. Is there anywhere else I could pay? It was that kind of, you know, finger bite. And uh, it was fantastic. I missed the shot, obviously. And I, I think the basketball didn't go too well from there. But uh, the, uh, also the last, like, sport that I tried out that didn't go too well was uh, karate as a youth. I, uh, I was 11 years old. 2005, and um, the the like regional or sort of, like city championship was going on. Like I had my own dojo and everything, um, and we I should have picked up that there were like a few red flags. First red flag was that there was like a panel of judges on this platform. Anytime there's a platform with a panel of judges, shit's about to go down. I was 11. I wasn't ready for shit to go down. And second, the dojo next to us had like black colored karate suits. 
they like obviously any colored dojo is cooler than just a plain white dojo like same applies to like you know races it's just cooler it's not <laughs> all right that was biased but anyway um the like we the first round is just organized choreography right you know why why turn why like that's all it is and our choreography sucked not because we were out of sync but because it, it was just boring next dojo comes up to us and they do like they whip out katanas and shit and they do all kinds of flips like it's really cool and it's like that was the, the second flag that should have picked up, uh, up on was that our like our dojo leader wasn't there like he just knew it was gonna suck and the only moral support i had was my mom which usually isn't a great thing and the second round was like randomized sparring right i was a big 11 year old so i killed the competition like no one could lift me so I just did this thing where like I juked and then they jumped to the right, I just threw them over. That's all you have to do, just get your opponent on the mat. I make it to the semifinals. And this is when I realized that I was screwed. There are certain moments in your life when you realize that you were screwed. Maybe uh, like you're strapped to a chair and the mom's about to kick you in the river. That's an example. Um, you get the wrong color on the pregnancy test. That's another example. Um, some old geezer tells you you may now kiss your bride. That's another example. Or this athletic kid backflips onto the arena mat over the audience and you realize that's your opponent. Uh, the, I realized I was screwed. And needless to say, I, I got my ass kicked. Rightfully so. <laughs> and uh, finally, I, um, over the summer, I, um, I met this, I was, I was working retail at, at a mall and uh, a, few, a few stores down. It's really good girl. I met her at the food court, you know, we started talking, doing our thing. Um, she visited me at work, I visit her, I kiss her on the cheek, you know, cute stuff. But at the same time, uh, there was this bomb ass uh, kiosk girl, smoking hot. We all know like kiosk girls are gorgeous because they're scam artists. They're, you know, they have like foreign accents and beautiful because they just want to sell you useless crap. And she was like the main girl that I was taking me out. Uh, the side girl that worked at the retail store uh, put, puts a picture on Facebook. And you know I like it, so it, it, like it, her comments show up, and this guy comments like hearts and faces, and oh I love you boo. And she replies oh I love you too. And I'm like wait a minute, and I look into it. They've been dating for like two years, and that's when it clicked. I was like wait, you mean to tell me that I was a side dude to my side chick the whole time? That's not that's not how it works. And I was really pissed, even though it's a double standard. I was really mad. And I know that like when we get our first female president, sure it's gonna be great, but like Obama already has shit. But like the <laughs> first female president, it's gonna suck because us men are just jerks in general. Anyway, that's all I got for tonight, but thank you. Thank you. Um Christopher, MC. What's everyone doing tonight? Woo! Yeah? All right, cool. Sounds like they got Harry Potter going next door, so that's always fun. All right, uh, just gonna play a couple tunes for you tonight. Uh, I wasn't really planning my set in advance, so let's see how it goes. If any of you guys know uh, Cage the Elephant, uh, this song's called Cigarette Daydreams. It's the first song to play. Thanks.
A song I wrote like a few years ago, so hopefully I'll still remember it. It's called uh, When I Ride. There's something out there that you just can't reach, like a wall that's in that's a big, big between, and I know this is time and I can't. Then we'll see the day when you win. I mean, I know, I know, it's alright. There's a lot of ways to take it on. I'll be on my way before the night is gone. I hope you give me on the other side. I'm serious. Move, move to these front tables. This is going to make it a lot better. It's going to take me a while to fix this mic. All right, come on. Let's do this. Am I making noise? All right, wonderful. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Come on. Take a seat. Get comfortable. We can do this. We can have fun. How much time do I have? I have no idea what I'm doing. One minute. All right. We can do that. All right. You guys, get comfortable. They should have prepared something for the bold request. Um, you guys are going to watch? Is that, is that something you're doing? You guys have any clue what you're doing? I graduated here two years ago. That's okay, man. I didn't know what I... It took me until senior year. I got to senior year. I finally realized I just didn't give a fuck about anything I've been doing for the past four years. Which is, uh, it's okay now. I'm wearing a J. Crew sweater. I'm a young professional. Doing okay. I work two different jobs where I each make ten dollars an hour. You guys can do that too. <laughs> the moral of the story is don't uh, don't be in calm. Just uh, if any of you guys are in there right now, don't do that. Or you can just work harder than I did. That's also an option too. I don't know, man. I, I got to give my parents a lot of credit for letting me go to film school. I think that's a really brave thing for a parent to do. Because I feel like your goal. Do we have any film students here? 
And I thought, all right, nice. We, uh, that's good, man. I, I feel like your goal as a parent is just to make something that's going to survive, you know? And I just feel like, like, if it, if you're like in a natural disaster, like art students, film kids, those are the first to go, for sure. Like, those are the last people you want to be with. We're just not built to last. Like, if a tsunami hit Boston tomorrow, could you imagine what that would look like? Just plowing through block after block of, like, liberal arts school. You'd probably get to Emerson first. Can you imagine what that would look like? Just all those kids whose parents let them pick up a camera instead of a football when they were growing up, just running with terrible form from that wave. It's a nightmare. Is that too dark for you guys? <laughs> all right. Oh, what else is going on in my life? We got, we got a list of stuff. Um, guys, I um, started a new job recently. It's, uh, it's all right. I, uh, I do a bunch of marketing bullshit, which, which isn't ideal. I have to write a lot of tweets, which uh, isn't the most masculine occupation. It's, it's very, it's demeaning to like ask your boss like hey is this tweet okay like is this going to represent the company well i just feel like that that's not the job for a 23 year old man i feel like that's the kind of job you give to like the 19 year old intern you're trying to fuck <laughs> it's like a great tweet megan you're doing a great job oh thanks so much i don't know man i, I miss college it's, it's a weird time now and it, it's it's weird still being in boston like being surrounded by all you guys and like all this young energy like i miss that like i, I would love to still have the reverence for life of like an 18-year-old girl in her freshman year of college. Like that to me is the human being at its peak. Like you guys, it, we have 18-year-olds? No. Freshmen at least, like you guys, just like hold on to that, that's, that's a good time, do your thing. I don't know, it's just like the confidence is crazy, I miss that, like just those girls, they're just like, they're just walking around like, oh my god, I'm 35 miles away from home studying public relations in the big city of Boston, I'm a different, I'm a different fucking person. This is crazy. <laughs> I miss that, man. I, I think 18 is the perfect age to send people to war, too. I don't get what all the fuss is about. Because you're just at, like, that peak moment of, like, confidence and optimism about your future. Like, right before you're about to enter the real world, make a bunch of real mistakes with real consequences. Like, right at that moment, they just send you off to die. That's a gift. You know? I don't know, man. Guys, I uh, recently moved to Jamaica Plain. Are any BU students familiar with that area? Does that make sense to anybody? It's cool. I, uh, I didn't feel like paying for music anymore, and I wanted to move to the kind of neighborhood where you get handed a lot of mixtapes. Uh, it's been working out really well. JP's awesome, though. I love it. It's, um, it's great now, especially now that we've solved racism. It's, uh, it's better than ever. It's weird, man. I do this thing, like, there's some days where you, you can honestly feel the racial tension in the air. Like, I swear to God, like, usually on days like where we don't indict people who we're probably supposed to indict, like, at, usually on days like that, I'll try and walk around and, like, not appear as white as I normally tend to do. Like, I, I accidentally got on the orange line during the Mike Brown protests, and uh, I was wearing this sweater, and I was eating a croissant. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just worried I'm going to be some guy's last straw, you know? <laughs> Like some guy who just grew up having to deal with a bunch of bullshit that I could never possibly comprehend. He's just going to see me with my pastry, just like listening to Hoobastank or something, and just murder me. <laughs> Probably be well deserved. I oh, don't know, man. It's, not, it's a sketchy area, but uh, it's working out for the most part. Uh, Jesus, guys, I got... These are like... Those are like the least fucked up things that I wanted to talk about. I feel like we're not on board, so... Uh, uh, I saw a pigeon walk down an entire flight of steps today. I think that's the saddest thing I've ever seen. How depressed do you have to be? Just like, fuck flying, man. I'm just gonna walk. It's awful, man. I'm getting, I don't, I think I'm just like projecting my depression onto like animals and shit. Cause like, I don't know, man. That, that seriously upset me. There's no, there's no extra joke there. That's just something I saw today. Uh, Guys, I get asked if I want to have sex a lot. Uh, not out of the blue, like after I've already brought someone home. Because I'm not suave enough to just like naturally transition into sex. Like there has to be some kind of discourse first. You know what I mean? Like I, I never understand what people tell me like, oh, like one thing led to another. Like I just, like every step of the process is like a battle for me. Like it doesn't just, I don't stumble into sex. It's like I said something funny and then like, 
the stars aligned and then we got here. It's just like every step of the way, it could fall apart at any moment. <laughs> I honestly, I haven't been present in like three years. I can't tell you one thing I've already said on the stage so far. Like, I, I don't think I've ever really been in the heat of a moment before, even. I need to work on that. Oh, guys. I, um... My sister recently got married, which was a super fun, great wedding. She married a super cool dude. I'm really happy for them. He's part of an awesome family, too, which has been super nice. Uh, the only thing that, that bothers me is that uh, they're cheek kissers. That's how they greet one another. And um, I don't know if any of you guys do that. I'm extremely uncomfortable with doing that. I actually just uh, successfully executed my first dap the other day. And I bat like at like 150 with those. Like, I just like, normally I, I sort of miss and then it just like, turns into this awkward handshake. <laughs> so when these people like come and, and I gotta do the whole cheek kissing thing, it's like way too overwhelming. And I actually got so anxious about this that I researched how to do this correctly online. And what I learned is that you're not actually supposed to kiss the person's cheek. What you're supposed to do is touch cheeks gently and then kiss the air next to the cheek. So I've just been kissing these people for like a year and a half. <laughs> And uh, I haven't gotten any negative feedback yet, but uh, I don't know if they just think I'm a fucking weirdo, but um, they're nice enough, so it's, I think it's working out okay. Oh, guys. Um, I started smoking weed again. Uh, I took a break for a little while, about six months. Um, and it's, I was nervous to, to get back into it, but it's working out well. I just, I don't, I don't want to be a part of the culture that, that's always not something I've, I've wanted to, uh, to associate myself with. I just, there's just certain aspects of it I can't wrap my head around. I just, I feel like, I know it's the winter now and it makes sense, but even in the summer, I feel like stoners just wear way too many layers. They're just really into heavy fabrics is what it is. It's just like hemp, wool, or cotton. Like I've never seen a guy smoking a blunt in Under Armour. <laughs> like wouldn't that make music festivals smell so much better? They could just wick away more of that sweat. Crazy, man. I saw a guy last summer on the Esplanade, it was like 90 degrees out, he was wearing corduroys and he was carrying a blanket, just smoking a joint. I'm like, dude, like, dress down, it's okay. You don't need to adhere to this uniform. It's crazy, man. Um, I always think it's adorable when, uh, when uh, like, warlords and drug kingpins have exotic animals on their compounds. You know what I'm talking about? I just think that's, like, that's a really cute aspect of, like, an evil profession. Because it, it's, it's cool that, like, at some point in those guys' careers, they just got to, like, take a break from, like, executing all their enemies and, like, rounding up all their child soldiers, and they just got to brainstorm. They got to be like, hey, I was thinking we should get a couple peacocks for the garden, right? Wouldn't that be great? I don't know. That's, that's just an endearing aspect of a very evil person to me. Um, I did shrooms. We should have uh, added that to the week part. I did shrooms, guys. Um... Has anyone Woo! done shrooms? Yeah. 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 Was it was it good for you? Yeah. Yeah. I make it sound like I just had sex with you guys. Like, sorry. Um, I uh, it was cool, man. I don't think I did it with the right people though, because I did it with a bunch of frat guys, and uh, those are not the people you want to do shrooms with. Because like when you when you do shrooms, it's a very introspective experience. You learn a lot about yourself, and like all the revelations that these guys came to at the end of it, they were just kind of common sense, you know. <laughs> Like, we disappeared into our hearts for like eight hours, and at the end of it, the best one of these guys could do, he was like, yo, bro, listen. You gotta treat people the way that you wanna be treated. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's gold right there, okay? I gotta do shrooms. You guys, we should do shrooms later. I gotta, I gotta redo it. Um, white people sports. I'm not athletic, but I'm good at white people sports. I played golf for the first time. Uh, I was down in South Carolina in December. Golf, no one should be good at golf their first time. I was fucking phenomenal. I can't explain it. I'm like, I have the worst self-esteem of anyone I know. I would not brag about anything. I'm telling you, I'm really fucking good at golf, and I don't play golf. And I think it's just my privileged upbringing. I think it just flows through my veins. That, that's what makes me good at golf. And I want to try other rich white people sports. Because I just feel like I'm going to be awesome at them. I want to go sailing. I want to play polo. I, the only thing I'm, I'm not into is, is the uniform for those. you got to get way too dressed up for those sports. And they're dirty, too. It's like, I don't understand. It's like, hey, I'm going to go play polo in the mud and go sailing. Do you have an Argyle sweater I can borrow? 
I forgot my Sperry's. <laughs> Fucking weird, man. Um, do we have, we have a set time limit? How much time do I got? Two more minutes. All right. I don't know if I got them, but it's too late now. We're gonna we're gonna finish them out. Uh, really, I think what I'm getting at now is I'm kind of just sick of this age. I know a lot of people. Like I talked to a lot of my like I was talking to a. Uh, some of my parents' friends, like, oh, you're like, you're 23, like, you're young, you're doing it, and like, I just want to be like 40 and stable. <laughs> like, I just, I just want to get to that point in your life where you just like wear a lot of sweaters and read a lot of John Grisham books. You know, it's this, like, this is like my ideal vision. I don't know if this resonates with any of you guys, but like, I just want to like live on the Cape, and like have a couple sons with strong jawlines and know how to sail. <laughs> And like they're assholes, but like I still love them. <laughs> that's uh, that's my that's my ideal vision for the future. I'm gonna leave you guys with one more thing. Um, or am I? Oh, have you guys seen Kylie Jenner? She looks amazing. Dude, like I I if you're 17, if you're a 17 year old girl and you're self conscious, just get plastic surgery. They worked out all the kinks. Like just you don't need to work on yourself. Just just go to the doctor and just pay a bunch of money and it'll be totally fine. I think she looks amazing. Um, yeah, this is a good message for everybody. Um, guys, I, uh, I struggle with going to church. Um, I, I have trouble distinguishing warm gazes from eye-fucking. Like, Christianity is a very eye-fucky religion. You know, like, you know, you ever know, like, those really nice Christians who just like stare at you with like, those crazy Tom Cruise eyes. Like, they're really good listeners. They're the like, most like nicest people on the planet, but it's like, it kind of freaks me out, man. Like I, I was in the gospel choir when I was here at BU, and it was the nicest group of people I've ever been with on the planet, but like, just the, the lust for life that these people had was just completely overwhelming. I couldn't handle it. Like if you, if you just said something that they happened to agree with, it would just turn into like a deaf comedy jam. Like the room, would just erupt. We, I remember one of the first things we did as a choir, we did this like team building exercise where we had to go around the room, just say our names, and we had to say like what our favorite fruit was, I think. And it gets around to me and I just like, I'm like, hey, I'm Ian. Uh, I just casually mentioned mangoes. I say mango, fucking 200 people just, oh, fuck, I love mangoes. Christians are awesome, man. I'm gonna leave it at that, thank you. takes the rain. I feel castled. I 
glass off the frame The figurehead is chopped off The new one too is insane Now 
now sweet babies cry for the cool taste of milk that milky delight that invited us song and if there's a taste in this life more inviting just wake up your windows and Watch as those sweet babies crawl away. We're figuring this out as we go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just do your best. I'll do my best. And you all do your best too. <laughs> I just know that I've heard this one. Tune for a little while now, but I wrote the lyrics last night, so we'll see if it's good. 
the world just screams and falls apart. But now we must pack up every piece of the life we used to love just to keep ourselves at least not carry on. And here's where your mother sleeps. And here is the room where your brothers were born. Inventions in the sheets. Where their bodies once moved but don't move anymore. And it's so sad to see the world agree that they'd rather see their faces filled with flies. All that I want to see is white roses in their eyes. I want 
them back. So I was preparing and actually doing this until my friends came and sheer pressure to you, so quite suck it's all there for. So, well, this is a bit of a wire mess over here. Uh, does anyone know, like, any person who just, like, hates all people? Yeah. Well, I don't, but I do know who the monkey's weight does. Well, at least I thought she did. Turns out she just hates me. <laughs> Yeah, her name is Shandi. My aunt and uncle have been raising her until she's uh, ready to be trained to be a helper monkey for the disabled. But, and every time I saw her, she was always yelling, and I thought that was just because people are scary. But then I recently found out that it's just me. And I guess my mother too, so it, it might be the bloodline or something. But I see her, I've, I've had her a couple of times, and what usually happens is she'll take a look at like the carrot or whatever. She'll look at the carrot, look at me like very suspiciously, then look back at the carrot, and then she'll take a bite. And then all of a sudden she'll jump all over her cage, and then yelling and screaming at me, and then backwards looks at the carrot, looks at me, looks at the carrot, takes a bite, jumps all over the cage. <laughs> then. Once again, looks at Kara, looks at me, looks at Kara, and then just throws the Kara in my face. <laughs> That's happened multiple times, so I was not to do it. But, I mean, I guess, in a way, she's family, so I have to put up with her. And speaking of family, uh, my grandparents live up in Rochester. It, I, I, I'm a local student, so every, every couple of, once or twice a year, we do the seven-hour drive up there to visit them. The seven hour drive wasn't too bad. I got to eat french fries twice in a day. This was, <laughs> this was before I had a dining van. So, and on my mother's side, I'm the youngest of six grandchildren. So I could get away with anything at that house. You know, I could get away with more as far as my grandparents are concerned. Anything so short of dating a non -Jew. But don't worry about me. They're dead now, so I can date whomever I want. Okay, that didn't go as well, but speaking of death, which is probably my favorite segue ever, speaking of death, there was this bunny. No, don't worry, this bunny doesn't die. Just a speaking of death. And I saw, I think, you know, like I like to be a manly man, but I admit that as soon as I see like a bunny or a cat, like all of a sudden I'm like a three-year-old, oh, it's so cute, oh, it's so cute. At least usually, but I saw this bunny walking home from, from the dining hall during finals week that last semester. And I come, walk down, I see this like cute little bunny, and all I can think of, maybe it will jump at me and attack me and like rip my eyes out and I'll get out of finals. <laughs> yeah. So. I like that too. What? I really actually think that too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, just full Monty Python. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I know that finals have finally gotten to me. Right. Anyway, I've been going through this site quicker than I thought I was planning on going to, so I guess I'll have to talk about my childhood, I guess. So you, you guys are going to have to shrink for me. Like, that's what the shrinks are. I say, talk about your childhood. Just talking to you. So. Uh, my first word ever was a pretty impressive first word as helicopter. I mean, it's like four syllables. Then my second word ever was cat. I mean, we had a cat, so it made sense. And then right after that, I stopped speaking for like three months. Now, I like to imagine this from the point of view of my parents. Helicopter. Oh, honey, our little boy's gonna be a pilot. Cat. Oh, honey, our little boy's gonna be a veterinarian or no, a lion tamer. Oh, honey, our little boy's gonna be a a, a mime. 
Of course, I disappointed them even there. I mean, look at me, I'm a stand up comedian. He's trying to be. Oh, I really should have prepared more. Uh, oh, this one's naughty, but I get it. Actually, no, it's not. Well, it is, but I'm not going to tell it because I really am prepared. I'm just going to blame my friend for peer pressuring me to get up here. Woo! <laughs> You're the best! Yeah, thank you all. Thank College bucket list kind of deal. Um, I'm really shy. You know, like, um, and I always wanted to do this. So I'm trying new things this semester. Um, I signed up for a drawing class in CFA. Um, awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's great. It's going great. The professor's great. Uh, you know, we can draw and stuff. With charcoal and pencils and the easel and stuff like that. And it's been fun. So every day I go into class and I see this guy talking to my professor. He's, you know, in his 60s, so I figure he's, you know, a late learner. He's trying to catch up with what he missed, you know, in the coming in the past weeks. Um, and those of you who take film classes, you probably know of Dennis. Does anyone know Dennis? Well, he's like in his 80s and he audits film classes. So I figure, oh, you know, this guy is probably just another Dennis. You know, he's just, I don't know, he's living life. It's never too late to learn something new, right? Um, no, but I'm like setting up my stuff. I get my, you know, charcoal ready and my pencils and because I'm a nerd and I want to be ready for when the class starts. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I'm setting up and stuff, and all of a sudden I look up and hello, Dennis is naked. <laughs> you know, um, there's no there's no preparation for that. Like, there's no introduction. The professor could have been like, you know, here's Dennis, everybody. Uh, he's about to get naked for you all to draw him. Or better yet, I don't know, maybe Dennis could introduce himself. You know, have some courtesy. You know, we're about to draw you. He could have been like, hi, everybody, my name's Dennis. I'm about to strip, so get ready. Like, there's nothing. And the thing is, like, I'm okay with you, Well, know, we're all humans. We all know what's going on. Hopefully, by now, right? Um, <laughs> um, but no, I, there's no preparation. There's no get ready for what your eyeball is about to see. And I was it was shocking. And, you know, 20 minutes later, I finally composed myself. And I'm the only one that had that problem. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, yeah, I'm not the person. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm fairly awkward. And there's a lot of awkward situations in life. Um, you probably know that, obviously, when you're alive. <laughs> um, I don't know. Have you ever had a situation where you're you're seeing someone and the song that they really like, they really like, like you, you know that song and you associate that song with someone else? You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know. Um, you just had good memories of that song. And Brian over here, he's a fan of that song, you know, and keeps singing it over and over again. He just keeps singing it like, I don't know. I was scared of dentists in the dark. Right? I was scared of pretty girls and starting conversations. All of my friends are turning green. And he keeps going, you know, like, shit, shut up. You know, I love that song. He used to sing it all the time in the shower, walking down the street, everywhere he went. And Tom over here happened to also like that song, or eventually did. And you associated that song with him, right? So what do you do? Do you tell Brian, you know, I don't know if, you know, how do you address that? Do you say, like, I, you know, can you, it was too often, right? You can lie and say, Brian, Brian, uh, I don't really like Matt Joyce's voice. But if you do that, you're shooting yourself in the foot, right? Because if, if he ever came out with another song, what do you do? You know, you're screwed. You can never listen to that song, to that artist in front of him again. Or you could just let it go like you're supposed to, right? You move on. And there's not the, well, that's not the only song I have issues with. There's a lot of songs out there that I have problems with. 
lyrics for the most part, like Nora Jones, you know? Uh, Wait till I saw the sun. Don't know why I didn't come. Right? What the hell, okay? Let me tell you something. You probably got disoriented from staring at the sun too long and you couldn't find your way back in. That's what happened there. Right? <laughs> right? Um, I don't know, Macklemore. Like the ceiling can't hold up. Yeah, you're damn right, because he's standing on the floor. Okay? <laughs> Right? There's a lot of problems out there. Sledgehammer, the harmony. Um, how does it go? Uh, feel my heart beat now, it would hit you like a sledgehammer. Right? What the hell, okay? You have a sledgehammer feeling like it's coming out of your heart, you should probably go to the doctor. You know? <laughs> probably get that checked out. I don't know. Spot. Um, yeah, it's a really short hand. This is my first time getting this hand off. Thank you so much for listening to me. With a tune I wrote, if you don't mind, it's called Time and Over. I hope you guys like it. Apparently, you're the only ones that can hear. <laughs>
warmed up. That was a tune I wrote called Climbing Over for all of you cats just joining us in the audience. Although I didn't notice anybody new walk yet, so that's okay. Um, next, we're going to be playing a song some of you might know. I'll just keep talking until they look like they're ready. I don't know how they do an amp or anything like that, which is kind of bad because I want to sing for like the real job one day. But I'm getting an English degree here, which is fun, I guess. Writing. Um, so this next song, um, has anybody heard of Ludacris? Yeah. So like, as mentioned, <laughs> someone in the audience, I can't really see, there's so many of you out there, it's hard to make out pieces, but um, what, someone was talking about rapping, and so rap lovers and rap haters unite. This is our version of um, a song by Ludacris that's very dear to my heart, and I hope you guys like it, recognize it, feel free to join it. Shaking money maker, life's in body about the page on I see you on my radar, don't you act like you afraid of I know you got it if you wanna come get it. Make sure there's money like hey hey. Shaking money maker, body about the page. I see you on my radar, don't you act like you afraid of Alexis Barney on the bass and Liam Burke on the cajon, which is just a fancy drum, so he feels cool. Um, this is a song I wrote called Tandem Bike, if you dig it. Yeah. That's my roommate and one of my only friends here. I have a very big fan base, obviously. Um, but if you like it, uh, it's on iTunes and Spotify, um, and you should check it out if you want. And it goes a little something like this. All these pages that I filled with were the negative body. They don't help me, they contribute to the crash. And the songs I sing in hopes that they
the first time I've ever talked to a microphone too, so <laughs> this is a very strange experience. I am very nervous right now. I'm not that nervous because I know literally like half of the crowd here currently. I'm about to tell a joke that they've all heard before. So at least I know that they'll have to laugh. <laughs> anyway, so I get nervous about a lot of things, uh, except for my health. I don't really care about my health a lot, it seems. I just kind of ignore it. For instance, uh, about a month ago, I started getting this weird feeling throughout my entire body where I just started to feel numb and like an overall sense of pain. Yeah? Well, I hope the rest of the story doesn't go the same, but I'm glad that we can share this. Did you, did you get better? Yeah. Alright, that's one of us. Anyway, so, that's a spoiler. Um, so anyway, so about a month ago I started feeling this like pain throughout my whole body and stuff, and then I let that sit for like five days, maybe, maybe it was two weeks tops. And eventually I decided I should probably go ask someone about this. And by that I mean I should probably Google the symptoms. <laughs> so I do that, I ask Dr. Internet what's wrong with me. And I get excited at first, because it turns out that probably what's wrong could be an electrolyte deficiency, which I thought was a good thing, because electrolytes are Gatorade. I could just drink more Gatorade. <laughs> but as it turns out, that's not how that works. You're shaking your head, I think you know. That's a lot bigger of a problem than that. You can't just drink enough red Gatorade and it goes away. No, it starts saying some shocking things to me, like immediately go to the doctor. You could slip into a coma. And this is like the idea of when you first feel these symptoms, not possibly two weeks in. So I'm sitting in my bed reading this, and I'm like, oh my god, I could die at literally any moment. But then I realize I've opened a new tab, and now I'm on Facebook. I have completely ignored the fact that I could die at any moment, and I'm now looking at a BuzzFeed quiz for which Teletubby are you? I think there's like four of them, there's not much to pick from. And that's why I decided to use possibly my last moment. I immediately thought, oh my god, what if my roommate walks in and I'm dead? And he looks at my computer and he sees the first tab that shows that I'm aware that I could die at any moment, and then sees that I proceed to open a new tab and now I'm looking at Kim Kardashian's butt. How lame would that be? So that is the sole reason I started to help. Sorry, I'm very loud sometimes. Again, never use a microphone. Very efficient thing. But, um, so that's the reason I decided maybe I'll go to the ER. So me and my roommate, we go over to the ER. And I've never been to an ER before, so I thought it was like in the movies or TV. I pictured everyone was on fire or bleeding. And just there's people screaming everywhere. People are just losing limbs, dying all over. And then there's just one doctor in the middle screaming, we're losing them, we're losing them. We're losing all of them. Everyone's lost. But instead, it was just a bunch of uncomfortable people in a white room. <laughs> so that was surprising, in a weird way. So apparently, even though I was 19 at the time, I'm 20 now, this story takes place in the past. Um, <laughs> even though I was 19, I was considered part of pediatrics for this, which, okay, 
So I go into this nice little room with a bunch of butterflies, and this nice lady says, hi, how are you? And I'm being a gentleman, says, good, how are you? But like, I'm not good, I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> But I don't want to then interrupt and say, I'm sorry, I meant I'm in a lot of pain. Because then I feel like I sound like a dick. So I just leave that good. So this woman just thinks I'm, I'm good, but I'm in ER. She then proceeds to ask other questions that I thought were kind of strange. She started with my name, which is fair, you probably need to know that. But then she moved on to like, how did you get here? And I'm like, why does that matter? Does it really, if I said I ran here, would you be more impressed? <laughs> but no, I took a cab, so I guess you're just kind of like, oh, okay, that's pretty basic. <laughs> Then she asks me um, to see my ID, and I give her my ID, and she's reading stuff from the ID, but still asking questions from the ID, I guess, to quiz me. So she asks, when's my birthday? And I say, February 4th, 1995. And then, no joke, she looks up from the computer and looks at me and goes, you're 29 years old. <laughs> and then I say, I am? <laughs> And she says, 1985. And I'm like, no, I said 95. But thank you for thinking I could be 30 and not possibly still in middle school. <laughs> and she's like, how silly me. And I, here I have it right in front of me, too. I'm like, you do. <laughs> Did I mention I'm in a lot of pain? <laughs> so... Then it pretty much gets normal from there. Though she did pause to say, and uh, you're not Hispanic. I'm like, bien, I'm not. I'm actually very white, thank you for noticing. So I go into the um, waiting room where my roommate is, and I say like, thanks man, uh, you know, you can leave now, it's fine. He's like, no, no, it's fine, they're playing Shrek 2, I love Shrek 2, I'll stay. So then I get called in, and they put me in a gown, which I never wore a gown before, that was pretty, Interesting. I don't have the frame for a gown. I don't pull it off very well. And they asked me to do some tests and stuff, have me pee in a cup. I go to pee in a cup, and then who do I see again but the woman that recently just informed me that I am not 29 years old. And she just slaps me and says, looking good, like a joke, like a snarky little comment, like we're good friends. I'm like, I don't know you. I'm not like, oh, Janet, you old fool, I'll see you later at the knitting club. No, you don't know my self-esteem levels, which happen to be very low at the moment. <laughs> so I proceed to you know, do that stuff. And then I come back to my room, and they're like, hey, have you ever had an IV before? And for some reason, I thought it'd be cooler to say yes. But I never had, and I was terrified to receive one. So I just have this thing sticking in my like, you know, forearm, and it's just poking at me. And she says, like, it shouldn't hurt for very long. But then very long passes, and it still hurts. And I'm just kind of freaking out. And I'm in this little room, but it's not a room. It's just a curtain around a bed. So I can still hear all the other children, and uh, other children, because this is pediatric, but like, everyone there was five years old, and then me. I don't know why, no one gets sick between the ages of five and me. It's just me and a bunch of five-year-olds. So I can still hear them like chirping or whatever, complaining about their injuries. And then eventually this huge woman comes in, she's like six foot nine, and she's like, hi, I'm Stephanie, but I tell the kids I bring the fun. I'm like, oh god, okay. She's like, I just came in to ask, do you want a Sudoku? I'm like, is that it? Is that the only offers? What if I want to do a crossword puzzle? Is that off limits? Is that only if you're not in pediatrics? If you're an adult, you get crossword puzzles, but here in pediatrics, you only get Sudoku's kid. So I say no, but um, is it possible that we can change the TV? Because they keep talking about this whole ISIS thing on CNN, and it's starting to bring me down. And she's like, well, there's no remote, but I can put on a channel for you. I need to put on the fun channels, because she brings the fun. Like Cartoon Network and Disney Channel. Now, if she knew me well enough, she would know those two were fine. But instead, she's like, but I'll put on USA for you. They usually have a good law and order marathon on about now. Now, um, not a good thing to have on a TV when you're like surrounded by children. Because I'm in my own little room, but I can, definitely the kids can hear me and I can hear the kids, and so tell the families here that the lady has now put the TV up to like max volume. I guess she thinks I'm deaf or something, which is fair, I'm an ER, who knows what's wrong with it. And I can't change the channel because I have this IV in my arm making me impossible, like it's impossible for me to move because I could just die. I don't know, I don't know how IVs work. So, it's now blasting law and order throughout the whole hospital, and it happens to be an episode where a little boy was stabbed to death. So you just hear people saying, he was stabbed so many times that he died a lot. And I just imagine some kid saying, like, mommy, daddy, why are you okay? And they're like, yeah, you just have a paper cut, it's gonna be fine. And then you just hear, coming from my little room thing, saying like, little children die every day. And I'm like, oh God. So I can't do anything about it. I'm not gonna just start screaming, saying someone turn this off. But eventually a, a male nurse comes in and he says to me, he goes, what are you watching? 
I'm like, I think it's law and order. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he leaves before I can come back. <laughs> no, don't please be okay with that. And I'm like, oh, it's law and order. It's not like porn. Like, no, no, you should have done something about that. You had the opportunity. You could have saved us all, but you left. And now I'm here alone. So it's a marathon. She meant it. So for four hours, I watched episode after episode of just basically only child murder, a law and order. So like I said, four hours have gone by, and I have not used my phone at all. I assume my roommate has left. And then um, a, a, you know, a lady doctor comes in. I don't know why I said lady doctor. That's a weird thing to say. A doctor comes in, um, and she says, oh, that's why I said lady, so you know what I meant when I said she later. Um, and she says, so good news, um, we found nothing wrong with you. I'm like, that's terrible news. Because there's something wrong with me. There's something very wrong with me. She's like, so we're just going to recommend you take some Tylenol. Like I said, I've been taking like six packs of Tylenol all day. Like, I've just been popping them like they're M&Ms. I knew the Tylenol thing. I wanted like some hard facts, like where you have to remove your skeleton and give you a new one. Or something. <laughs> and you're just saying, yeah, as far as we can tell, you can just go. I'm like, no, I can't, but fine. So I left, and again, it's been like four hours. So I assume my roommates left too. But I go into the waiting room, and I'm pleasantly surprised to find him there. I say, Adam, what have you been doing? He's like, well, my phone died a while ago. I'm like. Oh no, man, I'm so sorry. You could have left. He's like, it's all right. I watched Shrek 2. I watched, wow, I really broke the punchline there. I watched Shrek 2 four times, so it's okay. <laughs> so, anyway, just to sum it up a little bit, in case you're wondering, it's now been about a month and a half since then. And uh, I only get the pains about once a week, so I guess I'm good to go. All right, on that high note, thank you guys. <laughs> We have the room and mics and everything reserved for another 10 minutes. So if anybody wants to come up and do my, like, if, like stand up, get on the piano, get on the guitar, yeah, okay. talk about your feelings, anything? Oh, yes. Feelings? I Which is not new for me, but this one was on the street, so I guess I get to be mobile now. Uh, I saw somebody who I used to hook up with, and uh, that's always a little bit awkward. Like, uh, she did the thing where she pretended not to notice me. Uh, I did the thing where I waited. Yes. <laughs> I misread that one. I don't know. I also, I, uh, on Facebook, I had another awkward interaction, which was making it two for two, and then again with an ex. This one a little bit more long term. Uh, this was a girl I went out with for about two years, and then I got a Candy Crush request, which is like a super special way of saying, I don't care about you. Because <laughs> Candy Crush, they give you a reward if you just send it to the person. They, like, I don't have to respond, I can just click that and be like, oh, that's not a human interaction, put it back. So she's like, hmm, who can I bother and just feel nothing? I was like, me! I like to think that our relationship has had just a brand new uh, low point. All right, um, what else? I used to work as a pizza delivery man, and that was always fun because it's like the one job that pays you very minimum uh, to go into very dangerous situations. Like uh, I delivered pizza one time, and uh, actually it wasn't pizza. I got tasked with delivering three uncooked pizza doughs to somebody's house. And I said, why? And the boss said, I don't know. <laughs> Good luck. So I got there, and I was like, I'm not going to ask, because asking is how horror movies happen. Uh, and I got there, knocked on the door, the woman came out, she looked perfectly fine. And I just said, hey, here's your pizza dough. And I gave her the look, being like, why is this happening? And uh, she said, oh, because uh, I have no teeth. And she didn't say it like that, because she had no teeth. And I, my mind went, I just couldn't understand. There were so many questions happening at once. Like, how do you not have any teeth? Like, zero teeth, none teeth. And <laughs> George Washington had teeth. He, didn't, he lost them, but he got new ones. That's a fact. That's like 300 years ago. And this woman's like, I'm behind. I don't know what I'm going to do. And she has enough money to get me to bring her pizza, but not to get tea. 
What's the priority system? <laughs> she tipped. <laughs> she, she tipped 20%. That's a lot for a pizza delivery guy. I didn't know what to do with it. I bought dental floss. That's exactly what I knew. What to do with it. I called my dentist and told him I loved him. And he said, that's un inappropriate. And I was like, you're my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feel like a weird dude. Uh, I was walking down uh, right outside of Boston Commons and I saw a sign for Boston Psychic Studio. And I went up to the door and I asked, like, hey, what do you guys do here? And they said, if you don't know, you're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a minute when you get up there. Uh, I recently found out that I have anxiety, which is awesome. Uh, and when I found that out, they're like, hey, we're going to give you some medicine for that. I was like, cool. Are there any side effects? He's like, yeah, mild ones. Don't worry about it. I was like, oh, hey, charity. Because I have anxiety. And the guy's like, don't worry. And I'm like, you're a doctor. <laughs> uh, what else? I had other jokes. Uh, Darren, what's another one of my jokes? <laughs> the, uh, the window one. The window one? Yeah. <laughs> That's not his. <laughs> uh, you want to come up and tell it? Oh, I'm not the the Oh, yeah, the couch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. This is another one about how I don't do well with people. It's great. It's going to be great. I was walking down the street and I saw somebody who I know. Not like a friend, not like an acquaintance, but this person who, like, they know that I exist and I know that they exist in a way that we should say hi. So I was like, I'm going to do that, and I waved, and I was like, mission accomplished, no fault here. I fucked up in the past, but this time it was great. So I waved, and then she waved, and I was like, hey, we're done, that's great. And I walked by her, and I got to this point, right here, the safe zone. And she goes, hey, Matt, how are you? And uh, I panicked, and I just went, yeah! And, then, <laughs> and at this point, by the time I had fully had yucked, uh, she was past me. I was like, I'm not turning around. <laughs> I'm not talking to that person ever again. Because <laughs> she asked me how, like, I was, she was like, hey, Matt, how are you? And that's like, the response is fine, how are you? And that's accomplished by most parrots. And like, I failed. Like, my brain was just like, shit, something's happening, go goofy. It's going to be great. Uh, so now I don't talk to that person anymore. <laughs> um, I still don't know what you meant by a window. Oh, you were telling me about like windows and shade. Oh yeah. So I recently <laughs> moved. I recently moved into an. This is how new these are going. Um, I recently moved into an apartment, which is great. Uh, but I realized that it's helping me learn about the type of person I am, and uh, the answer is lazy, because my shades have uh, two modes. They have uh, completely closed or exhibitionist. Uh, because if I'm in my apartment, pants are not going to happen. Uh, I also learned that I am perfectly capable of convincing myself that hummus is a well-balanced meal. <laughs> because like, dishes are hard and Netflix is easy. <laughs> and stuff like that which lets me know that I can settle down. <laughs> I'm ready to commit. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, cooking has been an experience. Um, I always like to say that I can cook, but recently I realized that I can only cook very, very specific things. Like, I got pasta down, cold. Only pasta, not mac and cheese. <laughs> that involves the cheese, and that is where I go haywire. Because I, this is sadly a true story, um, I cut myself making macaroni and cheese. Yeah, I didn't have scissors and the pack gets kinda hard to tear, so I took a knife to that and ended up with two stitches. <laughs> and that's when my mom was like, you're in college. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is another one. Uh, this is a, another true story, which is kind of, you know, good. It's when, uh, it's how I figured out that I wanted to be a comedian. I was digging into my old stuff, and I found a yearbook from uh, first grade. So I was seven, and that's important. Because in this yearbook, they have quotes. And they give you a question, because you're seven, you're not going to come up with anything by yourself. And uh, for me, my quote, or the question for my quote was, what is your favorite time of the year? And my response was my favorite time of the year is when everyone pretends to like each other so they can sign each other's yearbooks. <laughs> I was seven! I hadn't had a yearbook yet! That was the first one! 
I looked at that and I was like, wow, I had no hope from the get-go. <laughs> and like, I walk around thinking like, I'm a ray of sunshine, and then like, that's kind of just in the background. That's tied with Power Rangers, as like the early childhood memories. Did anybody remember Power Rangers? That thing was awesome. Yeah, it's amazing, because it was uh, an old program that made no sense, but was desperately trying to teach you something. Power Rangers had giant monsters and giant robots and a moral that was just shoved in there. Like the guy would destroy the monster, it'd blow up half the city, easy. That's on like a slow day. And then the lead guy would jump off a giant robot, which is a good lesson to teach kids, jump off of high places, he goes fine. Uh, he'd take off the helmet, whip his ponytail, because it's the 90s and he's a badass, and they'd look right at the screen and go, hey kids, monsters suck. Make sure you recycle. Like, I wasn't gonna recycle, but I kicked the shit out of a lot of trash cans. <laughs> um, Alright, so I guess I'll do one more joke. Mm, Darren, what joke should I do? Uh, you run out of my jokes, too. I think so. Damn it. Alright, um. Let's see. Uh, this is a simple one. Growing up, I do not have a lot of friends. Uh, that's not the joke, hold on. Uh, I didn't, and I couldn't really figure out why, uh, but it turns out that I just kind of look a little bit scary. Especially growing up, I had a very serious face where people would think like, man, he really doesn't like me. But then internally, I'd be thinking, I, I really like pizza. Like, pizza's probably not what's gonna happen on this lunch. But outwardly, anger, very angry. Uh, in reality, though, it was kind of like, you know, I was a spider. Because uh, I was more afraid of them than they were of me. And that's how I like to put it. That's how I described it to people. But then I thought about that, and I was like, man, that makes me a five foot nine hormonally unbalanced spider. I would be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Sure. I'll let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let it happen. What's up, you guys? Uh, so, like Matt, I also do stand up. We're in the same comedy troupe. Uh, but I'm not going to do stand up. I want to try to sing a little bit of something. This is like my first time trying to sing. So, we'll see how this goes. Once again, I'm going to have to raise the mic because I'm a lanky motherfucker. <laughs> what do you guys sing? I'm going to sing I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. Yes! Yeah. Hopefully I'm not shit. <clears throat> when I had you to myself, I didn't want you around. Those pretty faces always make you stand out in the crowd. Then someone picked you from the bunch, one glance was all it took. Now it's much too late for me to take a second look. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me back in your heart? Oh, darling, I was blind. Let you go. Let you go, baby. Now, since I've seen you in his arms, I want you back. Yes, I do now. I want you back. Ooh, ooh baby. I want you back, yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to live without your love is one long sleepless night. Let me show you, girl, that I know where I'm from right. Every street you walk on, leave tear stains on the ground. Following the girl, I didn't even want around. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you, won't you? Please let me back in your heart. Oh, darling, I was blind to let you go. Let you go, baby. Now, since I've seen you in his arms, I want you back. Yes, I do now. I want you back. 